Um, I am here to present a fun use case for the Power Platform, uh, AI Builder, uh, Object Detection and Text Recognition. Uh, before I begin, I have kind of a, I guess in this sense, a unique background where I have no technical experience. In fact, just like a year and a half ago, I was washing cars for my company's fleet. Um, and what I noticed is there was a lot of opportunity to modernize our, our practices. We were taking a lot of notes on paper. We were keeping records on, on notepads. And then one guy was tasked with uploading that information to an Excel workbook. And there was just tons of opportunity, a lot of milk on the floor, so to speak. Um, and I got linked into the Power Platform from someone from our chief data office. Um, and all I kind of needed was an introduction and a bit of assistance getting started. And uh, this platform just kind of unraveled itself to me as I, as I moved along through it. And I was able to quickly solve problems all around me uh, using templates. And then from those templates, I was able to take them apart and rebuild them and uh, upskill and learn how to create new solutions from scratch. And then any question I had, I was able to just hop on YouTube and watch an April Dunham video or listen to Reza and kind of figure out who solved this, how can I modify their solution, and how can I uh, impact my, my workday? So uh, you don't have to be an expert. If this is your first time in this meeting like my, uh, do not be alarmed because we can do this and there is a community that's welcoming and full of information that can help us along. So without further ado, here's the fleet wrap detector. So I work for at and I work for at ts fleet. And in this fleet, uh, we have a huge number of vehicles. We have over 60,000 vehicles deployed in the field. And of that number, somehow we lost count of the advertisements that are on the sides of these vehicles, which is a huge problem, as you can imagine, because we've got vehicles out there that are uh, advertising products we no longer support or products we no longer support in specific regions. We've got UVerse projects, uh, wraps or uh, DirecTV wraps, a mystery machine wrap somewhere out there. And we just had a hard time gathering information accurately and efficiently. So um, I just started a new job within Fleet. Uh, no more washing cars. Now I'm a data analyst of some sort. And uh, I was still asked, hey, can you get a, a, an understanding of what's out there? And I said, sure. Well, I think the easiest way for me to gather information would be just a Microsoft form. And my leadership team said, yeah, that would work, but we'd like you to spend a little more time in the ideation phase, which is a wonderful prompt and a sign of uh, great things to come, I think. So I was like, okay, because I watch April's channel, because I'm locked in with the community on YouTube, I know that we could use object detection. I can build an AI model that will detect a wrap. And then we can send that information to uh, the data warehouse of our choice with a power automation flow. So. There was an opportunity here. I could uh, display my uh, Power Platform skill set by updating wrap records from just a photo. That photo would detect a wrap in the field, uh, detect text, and then migrate that data uh, to a SharePoint library or a SQL database. And that got my leadership team's brain spinning. And I think that's one of the best parts about this platform is an idea can go into um, development very quickly and then from development into production just as fast. So what are the features necessary in the solution? Uh, I don't know if anyone works in the telco industry or the construction industry or anything like that, but it's pretty difficult to kind of uh, push a new initiative out into the field, especially when you have as many technicians as we have. Everyone is, is mired by efficiency numbers and metrics. So we don't want to impede anyone's workflow. This solution has to be as simple as possible one button click or two button clicks, maybe four at most. Um, and then it also needs to be connected to live data. We, luckily, we have tons of data tables in our SQL database that are connected to like live vehicle inventories, but we need our application to refresh as often as those uh, inventories do. And then I want it to feel scalable. I want uh, my peers and my leaders to be able to present ideas and then see those ideas go into a development environment very quickly. Uh, it should feel modular like synthesizers or, or, or Legos or connects or something like that. Uh, and the Power Platform allows us to do that. So how it works is we build, I build a really simple Power App, which is just the souped up form, just to get this 
uh, into the hands of our technicians. Within this Power App, I've embedded a power automation flow. Within that power automation flow, I embedded an AI builder model. That automation flow sends information to a SharePoint uh, document library for storage. And then I've got a very simple Power BI dashboard to display that information, uh, to report to my peers or leadership. So uh, as I mentioned, I do not have a technical background. Uh, as I said, there were a lot of cool terms used just in the last 15 minutes. Tree shaking was new to me, so I hopped on a Bing chat while you all were talking. I was like, oh, I learned a bit more today. Uh, but I use LLMs maybe 60 times a day at this point as I'm learning. Uh, I use it for everything from drafting emails. Uh, when I get technical emails sent to me from other departments that I can't really make sense of, I ask for an explanation of this email, and then I will type in my thoughts or my response, and I'll say, hey, make me sound smarter, <laughs> reference the previous email, and use some of the same terms, and send that email back to the person. Um, I use LLMs for uh, Power Apps formulas, for DAX functions. Uh, I use it as a code comment generator or function or formula comment generator. Uh, I like to use it in Power Automate. Each line, I'll add notes. Uh, I'll just uh, take the the uh, peak code from a, a step in a power automation flow, drop it into a large language model and say, hey, summarize this in two sentences. Then I'll copy that and drop it into each step of the power automation flow. Uh, but basically, in the last seven months, I've become bionic, or at least I feel that way. Um, I'm also getting into Python scripts now, and I see there's opportunity for me to implement those Python scripts I write with large language models into power automate desktop flows. So. The sky is the limit, or at least it feels that way. So I'm certainly empowered. And I hope if you haven't experienced these large language models, or if you haven't implemented them in your workflow, I really encourage you to do so. So back to the problem at hand. So we at t has about eight wraps that are deployed in the field, um, and they are as follows. Uh, in order for me to develop an AI model that can detect these wraps on a vehicle via photo, I need to collect images of each wrap. Now, uh, the AI model uh, requires at least 15 images. I found that you know at least 50 is a, is a better place to land. So I need 50 images of each vehicle's wrap, and I want it from multiple angles. And unfortunately, uh, here in Dallas, I don't have access to each one of these wraps. So that created a, a problem, uh, but also with every problem is an opportunity. So I was I thought maybe I can crowdsource this image collection. So in order to crowdsource image collection to gather about 50 photos of each wrap, I was able to create a fleet collection application in Power Apps. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this process needs to be as simple as possible. So this app has about five steps. You enter a vehicle number or take a photo of the vehicle number. You capture a photo of the vehicle tag the, the photo you've taken, verify the results, and then upload it to SharePoint. Here's what it looks like. That process begins with collecting a vehicle number. Uh, I built a very simple power app, uh, really just one button, and I tried to make it mimic the iOS uh, photo application. And I, I created a, a little guideline that shows, hey, kind of keep these images the same size and keep the context similar. So you'll take a photo of the vehicle number. Each vehicle has a unique ID. That vehicle number gets stored in a, a collection locally. And then you're asked to take 10 photos of your vehicle, five photos of the passenger side, five photos of the driver's side. And each photo has a different angle guide, right? Uh, and after you take one photo, you progress to the next screen and the angle shifts. So we should get a standardized set of photos in our SharePoint library for each vehicle's wrap. Uh, to collect or to create this angle guide, all I did was take a photo from my cell phone and then like uh, trace it in Microsoft Paint, right? And then I used that photo and just uh, embedded it in my Power App. So after you've taken 10 photos, you're asked to simply press a button and each button uh, creates a different variable value for a wrap variable within the application, and that gets stored in the collection. Once you've collected the vehicle number, the vehicle photos, and you've identified the wrap, you're asked to verify that information on a very simple verification screen, 
if that information is incorrect or if you've taken bad photos or if you've taken 10 photos of yourself on, by mistake, simply hit retry and the process starts over. But if those results look good, you press submit. Of course, when building an application specifically for field deployment, we want every button to have a reaction or an action to make this app feel responsive. So you press submit and in the cloud, a power automation flow is triggered. We collect all that information and we tie it to vehicle records from a SQL database. That information then gets dropped into SharePoint. But that power automation flow in the cloud only takes about two seconds. So once that cloud automation is completed, there's a step that says respond to power apps. That respond to power apps triggers the screen to go from migrating to SharePoint to data successfully submitted. Thank you. Once there, the user can either close the app or press next vehicle if they're doing more than one. So that cloud automation flow, it's pretty simple. Uh, we're collecting variables and then just uh, creating files in SharePoint. Um, our SharePoint folder, uh, it's a document library. Each file is just an image, right? But each image has a ton of metadata that we've just migrated from our SQL database based on the inputs from the user. So the vehicle number is just used as a key value, and we just perform a query or look up in our SQL database and collect all the information we need from that database and drop it into SharePoint. It's very simple. So now that we've collected photos from the field, we have enough photos to develop an AI model. And you know, the thought of creating an AI model for a novice like me seems daunting, but I was happy to realize that I've I'm kind of a pro at AI model creation because I've been doing it for my entire digital life. If you've, uh, you know, maintained a social media presence, you've created AI models before. So it's simply uploading photos and then tagging the photos with the correct subject. So now that I've created an image collection application, an AI model, I need to now create the wrap detector application. Now the user can just take a photo of their vehicle's number, take a photo of their vehicle, one photo, and that information will get sent to us. I don't have to recre recreate a new application. I can just use what I've already made. I've got components. And now that I've got about a year of building apps under my belt, I've got a component library. I'm just grabbing things I've already made and dropping them into new solutions, changing some colors, maybe changing some font styles, but I'm really efficient. And you'll find that the more apps you build, the faster you are. So now I need to build a wrap detector application. And this application is going to be even easier. Just three steps. Take a photo of the vehicle number, take a photo of the vehicle, and then upload. That process is quite familiar. In this situation, we're only taking one photo. Ten are not needed. This one photo is stored locally in a collection, and it'll be used later in our object detection. Same process after you take the photo, migrating to SharePoint, data submitted. Our automation flow, AI builder, SharePoint. But here's the information. Now that we've got all that data into our SharePoint library, I can easily migrate it to a Power BI dashboard. So uh, within you know, a couple hours, I had quite a few responses. And in this example, I've got 10 responses. And I can immediately share this with my leadership team and say, hey, we're getting feedback and at a glance we can see where these wraps are located who's driving it what the report structure is like and if we see how many vehicles are left to be reported on so that's really it fleet image detector and the fleet wrap detector it's data collection simplified um, when i was able to turn this around to my leadership team in about a week they were really impressed and that was pretty exciting and um, encouraging, right? They saw what was possible. Now their minds start to, to spin and they go, wow, I see opportunities here for just general image collection. What about fender bender or insurance reporting for our vehicles or inspection reports? Our mechanics can start to use a tool like this. The use cases are, are vast. And the beauty of this power platform is everyone can, it feels approachable, right? So everyone can see that an idea can go from ideation to fruition rapidly and we can change it on the fly. It's a dynamic situation and environment. And that kind of empowers 
most users and everyone who's got an idea or anyone who's felt stifled in the past thinking that they need to communicate their idea to a, a development team or or use a, a product manager or a project manager to get an idea across. We kind of streamline that process now. And a quick example is, so I was able to present this about a month ago. Um, and since then, I've already, see, uh, started working on other projects that are spin-offs of this one. Uh, the first one was actionable messages. So yeah, we can build an application and that's fun, but maybe we can just build an embedded form in an email. Uh, I saw on a, on a YouTube channel that uh, there's something called actionable messages, which are basically just JSON forms you can embed in an email and that you can respond to within the email. And that created a really cool solution. I was able to present that to my leadership team and they were like, yeah, go test that out. Uh, so on Tuesday, I submitted two, 205 actionable messages to drivers in a different organization. And in about three days, I've gotten a 62% response rate, which for a company this size, that's pretty impressive. Uh, and I got really great feedback. One of the uh, uh, construction technicians said, I've never taken an easier survey before. And that's something I was able to spin up in a, like less than a day and then send out into the field in less than in 48 hours. And I could drop that information into the same templates for Power BI dashboards and the same templates for SharePoint libraries. I'm able to churn out solutions in record time. And other cool ideas, yeah, apps are cool, surveys are cool, but hold on. What if we use an app that these users are already familiar with, like the iOS Messenger? Is it possible to use an email to trigger <coughs> an MMS and have that MMS trigger a Power Automation flow? And the answer is yes. So just in the last two days, I've been messing around with this, and I'm pretty enthused about what's possible. The Power app is cool, but what if we just send a text message to each technician and say, hey, send me a picture of your vehicle number and send me a picture of your vehicle, and then that's it. So the future is bright, uh, and I hope that my use case and my experience or lack thereof is enough to uh, introduce uh, a few people or inspire a few others to get their feet wet, dabble in this platform, and try to build an app. I think you'll find that it's responsive. You're more familiar with it than you might think. If you've built a PowerPoint pre presentation or worked with Excel, it's going to feel familiar. You definitely can do it. And if you stumble, there are enough resources out there available, and the community is open and engaging. You'll find your footing very quickly. So that's my presentation, Data Collection Simplified. Thanks for being here, everyone. Mm -hmm.